Hey everyone, welcome back to our journey through the scriptures. We find ourselves in Job chapter 16. Uh, we just had a uh, remarkable uh, friend trying to comfort. No, he wasn't trying to comfort. <laughs> Eliphaz was uh, straight at Job, once again, uh, putting him into his place, uh, being able to talk about repentance. Uh, but Job, being the faithful man that he is, knowing that this is of God rather than of his actions. And so he's going to reply once again in Job chapter 16, uh, to these outlandish statements that Aleph has made, um, of being able to talk about uh, generations before and actions of before, and they're, they're, they're just set in their reason of when bad things happen, it's because of our actions, uh, and being able to say instead of there's a reality towards in our world that we're not necessarily just called to a good life, that there is suffering involved because of the chaos of sin. Um, and Job replies to that in that way. He's actually uh, getting a little upset. He's not necessarily, he's, he's turned sarcasm from his last reply um, to really kind of a, uh, aim at his friends and being able to say that you guys are not helping. You guys are not friends. You guys are not comforting at all. And so where does my comfort come from? It's not coming from my closest friends. It's not coming from anything in this world. It's not coming from the goodness of my life because I'm suffering and I had that trial. Where does my good come from? I pray that it comes. I pray that it comes through a mediator. I pray that it comes through an intercessor. I pray that it comes uh, when I lay, lie down in death and being able to have a witness in heaven. And, and when, when he's speaking these words, when he is in amongst this culture, he is just pushing us forward to be able to, on this side of Jesus, we get to say, yeah, Job, you're going to have that. You're going to have that in a Savior. You're going to have that in a merciful God. And Job just keeps relying upon that mercy of God, even though he feels attacked by him, even though he's going to use words in this chapter 16 that he has been ferocious towards Job um, and that he's tearing apart Job. He's torn apart his life. He's torn apart his, his now friendships. Uh, what is there left? Yeah, when there is no friends, no things part of this creation, when there's nothing that we can lean on or understand within this world, where do we turn? We always have hope. We always have hope that we have a God who, yes, is just. A God that does allow suffering, which we don't really understand or can't explain. But we have a God that's present and near. We have a God that loves us so much that he sent a mediator, someone to speak on our behalf, someone to suffer and co-suffer, have compassion with us. And we have a God that um, sent his only son to do that suffering on our behalf. And so that we can look and understand that there is a mediator for our judgment. His name is Jesus. Uh, Job doesn't get there because that isn't necessarily present, but he believes in the promise, so he never gives up hope. Chapter 16 of Job. Let's read together. Then Job replied, I have heard many things like these. Miserable comforters are you all. <laughs> Listen, he's not holding back at all. Miserable comforters, you are all. Uh, will your long-winded speeches never end? And so here's the reality in that culture, but also in our culture. Um, usually it's cut and dry to the point. When you want to have helpful advice, it's not a bunch of words, right? It is to the point. This is what it's about. But these are long-winded speeches of they would say revelation. They would say of generations past. Uh, but he says it's not helping. It's not comforting. They're just too long-winded. You're speaking uh, like fools, Um but what, uh, halfway through three, what ails you that you keep on arguing? I also could speak like you if I were, if you were in my, in my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you. Never uh, uh, discount somebody's suffering unless you've been in their shoes. Can't discount somebody's suffering, somebody's feelings, um, somebody's innocence, somebody's uh, what they believe is happening in their life without being able to walk into their shoes. And that's the beauty of our God. He could say, just continue persevering, continue to endure this pain and this suffering. Um, you can do it. But rather we have a God that says, I know you can do it because I sent my son to do it. And he isn't a, he isn't a savior that can't sympathize with our suffering and our grief, but rather he has walked that walk. And that's an amazing thing about our faith. That's an amazing thing about our Savior, um, that he can sympathize, he can empathize with our suffering 
with our torture, with our trials. And he continues to just push us along and say, we can patiently endure. Just rest in me. Rest in me because I was able to take that walk into the fullness and the glory of God. So just rest in me. Come alongside me. I will carry you through this trial. How beautiful that is. But so many times in this world, uh, we can prejudge or we can uh, just even say some outlandish things like these friends are saying to Job. Um, of being able to say, and Job says, I, can, I, could, I could have done that. If I'm in your place and being able to speak to me, um, I might be saying the same things, but um, let's reverse that. Walk in my shoes for a while. Believe me for a second that this is not of my actions, but this is of God. He says in verse 5, and this is so beautiful, Job, and Job is just an incredible man that we can just glean from. Chapter, uh, verse 5, it says, But my mouth would encourage you, comfort from my lips, would bring you relief. I would at some point believe you as a friend and stop trying to just lay the law and the repentance on you and just be present with you, comfort you, and being able to really say the same things that Joe's saying. I don't know why this is happening. I don't know why this happened, but I'm here. I'm present. Um, what do you need? What can I help with um, to be able to alleviate some of this trial or suffering? And that's a true friend, and that's a true friend that has faith that God has sent them there to help rather than just to be words of comfort. Verse 6, yet if I speak, my pain is not relieved. And if I refrain, it does not go away. He's stuck. Surely, O God, you have worn me out. You have just devastated my entire household. You have bound me and it has become a witness. My godliness rises up and testifies against me. God assails me and tears me in his anger and gnashes his teeth at me. My opponent Right? My opponent fastens on me his piercing eyes. God is against me in some kind of way, and I don't know why, but he feel, it feels like he's against me. It, now it doesn't even just go from God. It goes from my people around me. Verse 10, men open their mouths to jeer at me. They strike my cheek in scorn and unite together against me. God has turned me over to evil men and thrown me into the clutches of the wicked. All was well with me, but he shattered me. He seized me by, by the neck and crushed me. He has made me his target. His archers surround me. Without pity, he pierces my kidneys and spills my gall on the ground. Again and again, he bursts upon me. He rushes at me like a warrior. Just feeling the, just the, the, the deep sorrow that Job is in and being able to have this understanding that it just feels like God is just against him. And what a despair that is. But even in that despair... Listen to these next words. Even in that despair, even amongst it feels like the attack, even though it feels like he's, he's choked out and being able to say, be taken by the neck, uh, kind of these lion words of being able to, this ferocious lion that tears, that gnashes, that, that clutches the, the neck. There's this incredible despair that Job is in. He goes in being able to say, my actions will go only so far. And that's what these next verses were. He says, I have sewed sackcloth over my skin, and bury my brow in the dust. He has mourned, he has repented, he has done what he needs to do, as it says here. My face is red with weeping, deep shadows ring my eyes, yet my hands have been free of violence, and my prayer is pure. I've done all that I can to be able to take upon this attack. Um, I, I've gone, I've weeped, I've mourned, I've put my head into the ashes, into the dust of the ground. That's a sign of mourning in that culture. Being able to sit in the sackcloth, I've sewed sackcloth and just surrounded me with it. And being able to say, this is the mourning, this is the weeping. I've done everything that is encouraged of me. Everything that my body, everything that my uh, being can be able to go forth in. And yet it still is despair. And then these next words are just incredibly luscious. Listen to these. 18, O oh, oh earth, do not cover my blood. May my cry never be laid to rest. Kind of a same request of, frankly, Abel's blood, right? Abel's when he was murdered, that it cried from the ground, of uh, being able to say that this would be talked about, that this would be have consequences for, for years to come. May Job's blood that's on the ground in his death, may it, may it rise and, and being able to preach and teach other people about despair but hope. It says, even now my witness is in heaven, my advocate is on high. My intercessor is my friend. As my eyes pour out tears to God, on behalf of man, he pleads with God as a man pleads for his friend. I can't find it in this world. I can't find comfort. I can't find hope in this world. I can't find hope and I can't find comfort in my own being. So there must be something greater. There must be something, someone else that's going to intercess, that's going to be my witness, that's going to be my mediator 
in the heavens. He's going to be greater than a friend. And he's speaking these words in reply to his friends. There is somebody greater than you. We know his name is Jesus because we have seen him. We have known him in our world today. We can hear about that gospel. But Job is just pushing forth and being able to have this little prophecy towards. There is a friend. There is a witness. There's one that is going to be on my behalf. And he pleads before God. And he does. Jesus has done that for us. He's done that for Job. And being able to say there is hope. There's a certain hope. And it is our faith that we have in the promise of the gospel that Jesus Christ is for us, that he's not against us, that while we feel, feel in despair and the chaos of sin, there is a God that is for us, that intercedes in our behalf, in our trials, in our judgments, and has mercy and compassion upon us. He is a God that has sent his only son, Jesus, to be able to step into our trials, know and sympathize and empathize both with what we're walking through so that we can go to him and he can say, come and rest in me. For I know what you're walking through. I know the despair that you're in. Let me comfort you. Let me intercess for you. Let me pray for you. That high priestly prayer of John 15 through 17, a great read if you want to go farther into the scriptures today. John 15 through 17, Jesus praying for his people and being able to know that God is going to bring them comfort and prosperity as they walk by faith. Verse 22. Only a few years will pass before I go on the journey of no return. Death will come. It's not coming immediately. It'll come in a little bit of time. But in the meantime, I have an intercessor. I have a witness in heaven. And that's what I'm going to put my hope and my comfort in. Not my friends, not my life, my being, not the things around me, but rather the one who knows me, the one who continues. Yes, he might be feeling like attacking me at this time, but he is a God of comfort and hope. I put my trust in that. Brothers and sisters, may we put our trust in God alone. May we put our trust in the one who sent Jesus, who walks with us, sends the power of his spirit to redirect us, keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the one who walked the walk of death, who walked the walk of trials, who walked our walk to be empathetic towards our trials and our tribulations and says, I am here. I love you. Wow, what a witness that is, that Jesus loves us. It's a beautiful day to be able to walk in that love. Have a great day.